Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Here we are on macOS Sequoia because a lot of people are experiencing this issue um, and you can see it's verification failed and that is when signing into Apple ID services such as iCloud, iMessage, FaceTime etc. So what do we do to fix this? Well after quite a lot of investigation and testing by myself and the team we have managed to uh, first of all, bring out a resolution to this issue and we are also going to be including it with the next revisions of our HSVE op operating system templates. So anything from Sonoma to Sequoia, obviously they're the only operating systems currently that have this issue. No doubt in June when the betas come out there will be an issue as well but we will be sure to implement these fixes directly into our templates in the future just so you don't need to make any changes when you're a newcomer to the Hackintosh community. Now, this video is if you obviously, at the time of writing this, there is no fix in our current templates. So this is either whether you're setting it up in March 2025, or you have an existing Hackintosh that you would like to get iCloud and Apple ID working on. So you can see this error message here, and this is due funnily enough to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapters on macOS, even if you don't have one plugged in, what Apple is doing is verifying that you basically have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So this is why verification doesn't work. Even if you've got a Fenvi card or something like that, this can still be an issue. So today we're gonna to be obviously going through how to fix this issue and I will show you it working right at the end. So please stay watching and we will get onto this right about now. Thanks very much for watching. So the first step on macOS is first going over to our HSVE getting started folder and opening up Open Core Configurator. So get that open. It is a legacy tool, but I do like using it. Um, so no complaints from me. So all we're gonna do is first of all, Mount our EFI. So mount our EFI partition. This is assuming that you've already got your EFI pre set up. If you don't, then obviously you consult our guides on our website. Or if you need any additional help, you can also book a consultation, which is in the description below for a link. So here we are in our config.plist after mounting our EFI. What I'm actually going to do is use OC auxiliary tools because that is sort of the modern way of doing it now and I do prefer deploying this fix in that piece of software so I'm just going to close open core configurator and get OC auxiliary tools booted up so in Sonoma and up you do have to do some silly workarounds on security for some applications so you can see it says that it may harm your Mac so you have to go to system settings privacy we scroll down to find that and we go to all the way to the bottom and just click allow on here open anywhere then just click open anywhere nearly click to open uh, done then enter your password for mac os and then the software should open so what i'll do i'll get this open and the year i mounted i don't need to show you that um, so just please bear with me so here we are in OC Auxiliary Tools, or OCAP for short. If we head to Kernel, Patch, all you need to do is basically create some new uh, kernel patches, which we will go through. Um, what I'll do as well, I'll make sure that you um, you have access to these in the description to copy and paste in, because obviously I'm guessing here that we'll have GPU pastor etc. set up. So I will get the commands myself to copy and I'll be back with you. So you can see here is a table. Now it does look pretty confusing to people that haven't worked with EFIs before, but I can assure you it is pretty simple. If you have an issue where your kernel patches aren't showing up correctly, you should have these already in there, which we have done for certain CPU fixes. If you don't, just make sure to go to system settings and make sure allow anywhere on anything um, like OCS script, etc. So all we're going to do is click plus and then the identifier is going to be kernel. You can give it a comment. I'm just going to leave it. 
um, and then the find well we'll first do count zero and then the find sorry the count needs to be one but the find is going to be this string here which you will find in our blog post in the description below um, and we will also uh, change the count which I did wrong then so the count being one and then we're just going to paste the line in the Sometimes it may not let you paste properly, uh, and sometimes it will. So just please um, do your best to attempt that. The limit being zero, and then the replace tag, which is in the table. And then once we've done that, we just do the same for the other field. To stop boring you with me copying and pasting, I will skip this ahead. Um, but essentially do that for the next field too. It's pretty straightforward. Again, if you do need any help, we have a Discord server and we also have consultation if you want us to do this for you. Um, but I'll be back in a moment when I've got the two fields populated. So believe it or not, once you've got both of these fields in there for kernel, if you go to file, save, and then reboot the Hackintosh, you should then be able to um, log in to your iCloud. But we'll try it now. Bear with me. So once it's saved, give the device a restart. And then we'll wait for this to restart and I will try and log into my Apple ID again. Now, whilst this is restarting, you just want to be aware of obviously the terms between this. So HSVE uh, as a business is not responsible for whatever happens to your Apple ID whilst doing this. So if Apple decide to blacklist your Apple ID, um, that is not our responsibility and obviously I do recommend that you consult maybe creating a separate Apple ID for your Hackintosh just in case you do get obviously banished from it. I've never really seen any reports of being blacklisted by Apple um, but please do it at your own discretion as I do know that it can be possible for Apple to ban your IP address um, and even your whole Apple account um, from accessing iServices. So you can see macOS is booting again and all I'm going to do is pop in my password and get logged into the desktop and then we'll go straight to settings and we will go to um, we will go to see if we can actually use for example let's try downloading an app on the app store as an example so just bear with me while it loads up so here we are into settings Entering my email, I will blur this obviously because it's my personal email and same with the password, popping that in and you'll see now we are getting a pop-up which I will do now so I'm just going to send another one because it didn't come through this time so please do bear with me And then I'm just going to allow this and pop in the code, 2FA code. And you'll be able to see um, that we should get an enter a Mac password, which is usually brilliant because that means that Apple is now ready to migrate your local account on your Mac to a new account. So you'll see on in a moment you can see on the left hand side I will blur a few things obviously for personal privacy um, but you see on the left hand side that we're logged in it's asking to enter a Mac password so we'll do that and in a few moments we should be all signed in so all I'm gonna do is wait a moment it does take a long time even on real Macs as well so just please bear with me so you can see we're now all signed in so you can see all my devices so this is the one that we've just added. You've got my old iPad in there, my Apple Watch, my MacBook Pro, my Mac Pro, which is a Hackintosh, that's a test one, and my phone. So you can see we're all signed into Apple ID. We can go to whatever I, um, iServices app we want and use it as normal. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it was also helpful. If it was, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to learn more about things like this. The next video will probably be how to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working on Sequoia, hopefully including some Fenvi card and some Broadcom cards. So, please be sure to stay tuned by subscribing. Also, if you would like any help,
please consider joining our Discord community, which will be in the description below. Also, if you do need any further help from the team, we do all also offer consultation, which you again can find in the description below. So the first step on macOS is first going over to our HSV getting started folder and opening up OpenCore Configurator. So get that open. It is a legacy tool, but I do like using it. Um, so no complaints from me. So all we're going to do is first of all, mount our EFI. So mount our EFI partition. This is assuming that you've already got your EFI preset up. If you don't, then obviously you can sort our guides on our website. Or if you need any additional help, you can also book a consultation, which is in the description below for a link. So here we are in our config.p list after mounting our EFI. What I'm actually going to do is use OC auxiliary tools because that is sort of the modern way of doing it now. And I do prefer deploying this fix in that piece of software. So I'm just going to close open core configurator and get OC auxiliary tools booted up. So in Sonoma and up, you do have to do some silly workarounds on security for some applications. So you can see it says that it may harm your Mac. So you have to go to system settings, privacy. We scroll down to find that. And we go to all the way to the bottom and just click allow on here, open anywhere. Then just click open anywhere, nearly clicked open, uh, done then. Enter your password for macOS and then the software should open. So what I'll do, I'll get this open and the year five mounted. I don't need to show you that, um, so just please bear with me. So here we are in OC Auxiliary Tools, or OCAT for short. If we head to Kernel, Patch, all you need to do is basically create some new uh, kernel patches, which we will go through. Um, what I'll do as well, I'll make sure that you um, you have access to these in the description to copy and paste in, because obviously I'm guessing here that we'll have GPU pastor etc set up, so I will get the commands myself to copy and I'll be back with you. So you can see here is a table. Now it does look pretty confusing to people that haven't worked with EFIs before, but I can assure you it is pretty simple. If you have an issue where your kernel patches aren't showing up correctly, you should have these already in there, which we have done for certain CPU fixes. If you don't, just make sure to go to system settings and make sure allow anywhere on anything um, like OCS script, etc. So all we're going to do is click plus and then the identifier is going to be kernel. You can give it a comment. I'm just going to leave it. Um, and then the find, well, we'll first do count zero. And then the find, sorry, the count needs to be one, but the find is going to be this string here, which you will find in our blog post in the description below. Um, and we will also uh, change the count, which I did wrong then. So the count being one. And then we're just going to paste the line in there. Sometimes it may not let you paste properly, uh, and sometimes it will. So just please um, do your best to attempt that. The limit being zero, and then the replace tag, which is in the table. And then once we've done that, we just do the same for the other field. To stop boring you with me copying and pasting, I will skip this ahead. Um, but essentially do that for the next field too. It's pretty straightforward. Again, if you do need any help, we have a Discord server and we also have consultation if you want us to do this for you. Um, but I'll be back in a moment when I've got the two fields populated. So believe it or not, once you've got both of these fields in there for kernel, if you go to file, save, and then reboot the Hackintosh, you should then be able to um, log in to your iCloud, but we'll try it now. Bear with me. So once it's saved, give the device a restart. And then we'll wait for this to restart and I will try and log into my Apple ID again. Now, whilst this is restarting, you just want to be aware of obviously the terms between this. So, HSVE, 
uh, as a business is not responsible for whatever happens to your Apple ID whilst doing this. So if Apple decide to blacklist your Apple ID, um, that is not our responsibility. And obviously I do recommend that you consult maybe creating a separate Apple ID for your Hackintosh, just in case you do get obviously banished from it. I've never really seen any reports of being blacklisted by Apple, um, but please do it at your own discretion as I do know that it can be possible for Apple to ban your IP address um, and even your whole Apple account um, from accessing iServices. So you can see macOS is booting again and all I'm going to do is pop in my password and get logged into the desktop and then we'll go straight to settings and we will go to um, we will go to see if we can actually use, for example, let's try downloading an app on the App Store as an example. So just bear with me while it loads up. So here we are into settings, entering my email. I will blur this obviously because it's my personal email. And same with the password, popping that in. And you'll see now we are getting a pop up which I will do now. So I'm just going to send another one because it didn't come through this time. So please do bear with me. And then I'm just going to allow this and pop in the code, 2FA code. And you'll be able to see um, that we should get an enter a Mac password, which is usually brilliant because that means that Apple is now ready to migrate your local account on your Mac to a new account. So you'll see on in a moment you can see on the left hand side, I will blur a few things obviously for personal privacy, um, but you see on the left hand side that we're logged in, it's asking to enter a Mac password so we'll do that. And in a few moments we should be all signed in. So. All I'm going to do is wait a moment. It does take a long time, even on real Max as well. So just please bear with me. So you can see we're now all signed in. So you can see all my devices. So this is the one that we've just added. You've got my old iPad in there, my Apple Watch, my MacBook Pro, my Mac Pro, which is a Hackintosh. That's a test one. And my phone. So you can see we're all signed into Apple ID. We can go to whatever I... Um, iServices app we want and use it as normal. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it was also helpful. If it was, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to learn more about things like this. The next video will probably be how to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working on Sequoia, hopefully including some Fenvy card and some Broadcom cards. So, please be sure to stay tuned by subscribing. Also, if you would like any help, please consider joining our Discord community, which will be in the description below. Also, if you do need any further help from the team, we do also offer consultation, which you again can find in the description below. Thanks very so much for watching. Goodbye.